Joining me is Dr. John Barthel, who is a professor of biology here at UCO. And Dr. Barthel, I know you are also known as a bee expert. So we're here in what is named after you, your pollinator garden, basically, to talk a little bit about some of those pollinator essentials to add into a garden. Tell me a little bit, obviously we need plants, but what are some of the other components we need to incorporate? Yeah. So um, the way that I view this garden is that it's a one-stop shop for bees, mm -hmm. okay? So they can come here and they can get nectar and they can get pollen. And those are two things that we know all bees need. But what a lot of people don't realize is that they need things like mud and they need water. They're just like us, they have to drink as well. Mm -hmm. So a good bee garden is gonna have in it, you know, a source of water. We have one of those right behind us here, for example. And it's also a source of mud. And it turns out that a lot of female bees, when they're making their nests, a lot of solitary bees that are different from honeybees, for example, use that mud to construct the nest that they need. Okay, so, so when a bee comes here, we expect that bee to find what they need. Okay, to not only just stop and get nectar and pollen, but also to get the other things they need to actually live right here on the premises of the garden. Okay, so they need home construction materials exactly, too, Exactly, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And you can see that with the wood right here that I'm touching uh, next to us. Um, you know, some bees like to nest above the ground inside of wood. They find little cavities in there. This little piece of wood here was dragged across the street, you know, um, by some rather entrepreneurial <laughs> colleagues of mine who wanted it here in the garden so that they could then um, use it as a place where bees in the spring, and they have, use it as a place to nest. Okay. okay. And do you need to bore holes in that? Because I know sometimes that you put holes yeah. for... It turns out this all works very naturally, okay. okay, because there are whole groups of beetles out there, for example, that like to nest um, and eat um, wood right after a tree has fallen. And so it turns out there are naturally occurring holes within the wood. But you can, if you want to, to give them a little help, is you can take a drill and drill holes into it. And in fact, we've done that with some of these pieces of wood that you okay. see here. Okay, yeah. all right. So we need a little, it's okay when a plant dies and we have a little exposed soil. <laughs> exactly, and in fact, there's a whole group of bees. Um, the majority of bees, I would say, actually nest directly in the soil. Okay. So they need these little patches of soil that they can go to and that they can start to dig into. And some of them go way down into the soil, a foot, two feet, something like that. So everything here is important to the bees. And the fact that they're living sometimes in the soil, that's something to consider when we're also applying different things to our garden as well, right? Yes, correct, yeah. So I think one of the things that you wanna make sure of is that the soil that you have really is natural in its origin. It doesn't have too many extra ingredients, you know, obviously things like pesticides and herbicides that might drain into that could be a real potential problem for bees. Uh, in fact, there's some thinking that one of the major contributors to the decline of bees across the world now are certain kind of chemicals that don't even necessarily kill the bee, but have what are called sublethal effects, you know, that can maybe make them not learn as well or live as long and things like that. So, you know, um, every piece of land that you have on your property may have different kinds of purposes, but if you want to raise bees in that land, right, you know, just think about it the same way you would your own home. You know, what do you want in your home? What do you want on the floor? What do you want, to, you know, in the food you eat and so forth? And so similarly with bees, you know, you want this clean environment that represents the kind of environment that they're used to, whether it's the soil, whether it's the flowers here, these are all native plants. You know, these are the things that bees are used to seeing and that they need. Right. And you were talking a little bit about their habitat, soil, wood. Um, you also have some boxes that I've noticed around this mm -hmm. garden. Tell me a little bit about what those are for. Yes, and the idea behind those boxes is that they are meant to simulate these little holes we were just talking about earlier that are in things like um, these down pieces of uh, branches and so forth that come from the trees. So it turns out that you can make these things, we call them trap nests, you know, okay. but what they are is just little holes that are drilled into pine. Um, and we put those all together into a unit and we, the whole diameters are different. You know, we have larger size for larger bees and small ones for smaller bees. And then we can hang those wherever we want throughout the garden where we feel the bees may need them. Some of them are low to the ground, some are higher, you know, some are in the shade, some might be more in the sun. Um, every species kind of has its preferences mm -hmm. at one level or another. And so we just make sure that they have potential homes available to them, you know, throughout the property, you know, and they can choose, you know, rent-free. And you're then using that as research to kind of identify? 
first thing we're trying to do is just to get a general sense of what's here. Okay. You know, so, you know, this year we've probably collected between a dozen and two dozen species of bees in the garden. Um, and so one of the ways that you can learn about them, yeah, is to put out uh, these little units and then you can see what their nests look like and that can help you confirm what the species is, what the needs of that bee are. But in general, if you can see that the bee is living here, if it's taking up residence, if it's in one of these little holes around here, mm -hmm. if it's using the mud, and the, you know, that means that it's, it's chosen this place as home. And that's a really good sign. Yeah. And it gets us excited because we know that they're going to make it. Well, I've never met somebody who has a pollinator garden named after them and a bee named after them mm -hmm. as well. Tell me a little bit about this bee that is named after you. Well. <laughs> That bee does not live in Oklahoma okay. yet, yet. You know, we're, we're trying to induce it to come oh, up okay. here to this part of the state, but who knows if that'll happen. But that bee actually lives um, probably on the border between Mexico and maybe up into New Mexico. Um, and it's a type of bee called an orchid bee. Okay, um, Euphrisia barthelli, if you want to know the name. Okay, yes. <laughs> and um, I owe uh, that bee name to a very close colleague of mine, Victor Gonzalez, who's up at the University of Kansas. University of Kansas is where they used to do a lot of bee studies, still do, you know, it's very famous for that. And uh, so he thought of me and he thought of students and learning and all that, and he thought, well, I'll name this, this bee for him, you know, because he needed a name. Okay. And right. so um, I was very grateful for that. I don't know how the bee feels about it, but I'm, I'm perfectly <laughs> fine. With it, yeah. and, and to kind of close, you know, there are some people that, and even young kids, like, how do you get them to not think bees are going to sting them, right? Let's yeah. let's kind of talk to that person who's just very skittish of the stereotype of bees. Yeah. So I think the first thing I'd say is that there are a whole lot of things that we call bees. Okay, there are about twenty thousand species of bees in the world. Okay. Um, in the United States, there's about four thousand, and one tenth, about four hundred or so, live in Oklahoma. Okay. So there's a lot of them. And most people, when we think about um, bees, we think of the honeybee, right? And the honeybee um, is actually the state insect of Oklahoma. But it turns out that um, honeybees aren't even from this part of the world, right? They come from another part of the world. Um, and so one day, maybe we'll have a, a native bee, you know, as the state, you know, bee of, of, of Oklahoma as well. But regardless, when people think of bees, they think almost always of honeybees, and honeybees sting. Um, and they sting when you get near their home, just like we would be a little concerned if somebody got near our home and started knocking on the door and we didn't know who they were and they were trying to get in and take, you know, things out of our kitchen so and so forth. They're protective. They're very protective, yeah. Um, but the vast majority of bees don't even live in that kind of thing where they have a big home with other bees, you know, a colony. Mm -hmm. They actually live um, alone and they're called solitary bees. They nest in the soil, they nest in these holes that we've talked about. And they have absolutely no desire to, to protect their home or come after you or want to sting you. The only time that you would worry about that is if you picked them up and you started to kind of squeeze them a little bit and they would might sting back. Just okay. like, if you, like if you were out shopping at the grocery store and somebody grabbed you, you'd want to you know, right. fight back a little right. bit. So I think the thing about bees is, you know, don't provoke them. They're just out doing their business. We've got a bumblebee right there doing its business. And if you went over and tried to pick it up and say, hey, I'm trying to, trying to finish my work today, you know, so. All right, so note to self, don't pick up any bees and they'll leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's a general rule. Watch them, you know, let them, you know, enjoy the environment and watch them enjoy the environment. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us You're today. very welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.